Here's a kind of a funny, sad story about Bezos. So Bezos is building a yacht, a luxury yacht. It's, it's, a, it's a sailboat. It's, I think it's 420 feet long, which is, it's, it's hard to imagine how big a 420 feet long yacht is, but it's, it's, that's, that's a big yacht. I, I've, I was once on, I spent a weekend on a 150 foot yacht. Wow. Wow. It was luxurious and beautiful and amazing. We literally landed on the deck in a helicopter, in a helicopter. We landed on the yacht. So I can't even imagine what a 417 foot, which is what Jeff Bezos' yacht is going to be, 417 foot sailing yacht is, is going to be. I mean, that's truly an, an, amazing, an amazing ship, an amazing boat. It, it, it's a lot of fun. It's costing him uh, $500 million, which is, I guess, not that lot of money for, for somebody worth over $100 billion. Anyway, um, this yacht is being built in Rotterdam, in the Netherlands, uh, by a company that specializes in shipbuilding, and particularly, uh, it's called Oceano, Oceanco, Oce Ocean Oceanco. Um, it's a company that, I think, specializes in building luxury yachts. Um, and the problem is that because it has these very high sales, in order to get from where it's being built to the open ocean, it's, um, it's got to go through these canals in Rotterdam, and there's a bridge. And the bridge is 230 feet tall at its highest uh, uh, bridge. It's called the Hef, which is this bridge. Um, it's 230 feet tall at that point. But that's not tall enough to let Bezos' boat go under. So Bezos, well, not Bezos, but Oceanco, a, a, a company based in the Netherlands, uh, approached the city, of, uh, the city of Rotterdam and said, look, we will pay to have the bridge dismantled so the boat can go under it, and then we'll rebuild it just the way it was, maybe even better. Now, what's interesting about this bridge is it's not in use. It was a build, bridge built um, a long time ago for rail uh, uh, transport. Right? I'm trying to look. I'm trying to find a picture of the bridge because it's it's a pretty ugly bridge. Um, oh, there it is. Okay, let me show you a picture of it. Let's see if I can show you a picture of this. Uh, you, you're gonna have to give me a second, and I'll show you a picture. Um, uh, where is it? I think that's it. Okay, can you see the picture? Hopefully you can all see the picture. Uh, let me just uh, move it so you can, I don't, I'm not in the middle of it. There, there's the bridge, right? It's a pretty ugly bridge, but you can see it's got a big span in the middle where the, where, where, where the, where the ship should be, where the uh, uh, yacht should be able to come, but it, it's just not high enough. And you can see that it's fairly, it seems like it wouldn't be that complicated to take off just that middle part let the yacht go and put it back on. And all at the cost of Ocean Co., I assume at the cost of Jeff Bezos. And initially, the city council said yes. And then the citizens of Rotterdam freaked out. They freaked out. You're going to dismantle the bridge? This is the bridge. This is the symbol of our country. This, uh, by the way, this was a railroad bridge. It's not being used anymore. The railroad does not run there anymore. It's just there. It's become kind of a symbol of Rotterdam, right? And you're going to do this for the sake of a billionaire? For the sake of a billionaire's yacht? How dare you? And uh, the citizens have, have wild up. They got all excited. And uh, they put pressure on the city council, with, withdrawn uh, their acceptance of uh, the proposal. Now, remember, this is not going to cost the city a dime. It's not going to cost these people a dime. They're going to put it back just the way it was. But they're not going to be inconvenienced. It's not going to cost them anything. 
it's not like this is a working bridge and now the trains won't be able to pass or the people won't be able to pass or the cars won't be able to pass. No, 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 no. It's the principle. How dare a billionaire ask us to do this? The citizens of Rotterdam are already preparing for when the boat passes here. It probably won't pass with the sail because they'll have to, they'll have to put the sail on after it passes somehow. Right, so they'll have to find a different way to do it. Uh, but they're going to throw tomatoes at it. They're going to throw eggs at it. They hate this boat. As they say, uh, w w one of these residents that got very upset about this said, there's a principle at stake. What can you buy if you have unlimited cash? Can you bend every rule? Can you take apart monuments? Why not? I mean, notice how this is fueled Completely, completely fueled by envy, completely fueled by hatred. So I did a kind of a positive story in the Netherlands about the, 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 the uh, what do you call it, the, uh, the farmers. I figured I'd give you a little bit of balance. Holland is a place where there are a lot of rich people. Holland became very, very rich in the 17th century, and, and a lot of wealth in Holland is old wealth. But there are also entrepreneurs in Holland that have made a lot of money. There's very, very wealthy people. Indeed, uh, of all the countries in Europe, Holland is one of the countries that has the largest um, inequality. You know, I don't care about inequality, but just, just so you know, it's got, got huge inequality. But this is the thing about Holland, very similar to Scandinavia. It's okay to be rich. It's okay to be rich. Don't flaunt it. Don't drive a nice car. Don't have a big yacht. Don't wear big, expensive jewelry. Don't flaunt it. This is a society shaped by a Calvinist approach to, you know, you're a steward of your money. It, you, God made this possible for you. You've got to be take care of it. You've got to be generous with other people. And of course, Holland is no longer religious. It's quite secular. But that mentality of egalitarianism, of everybody being the same, of everybody dressing the same, everybody looking the same, of everybody having the same amount of appearance in terms of wealth, even though everybody knows that they're not the same. So they despise the idea, the idea that Bezos has a boat, a big boat. They don't want to see it. They don't want to know about it. They certainly don't want the bridge to be taken apart so that it could be brought into the ocean. They, will, they don't want to have anything to do with it. Indeed, they want to protest it. This is envy. This is hatred of success for the sake of hatred. There's no, nothing to be gained. There's no value. There's no positive here. It's all negative. It's, as Paul says in the chat, it's a bridge to nowhere. There's no value they're trying to protect here. It's an ugly bridge. They, by the way, have a, a beautiful bridge in Rotterdam. Look at this. I'll, sh I'll show you another picture. Um, let's see. No, not that one. That one. Look at this bridge. That's a beautiful bridge. Yeah, I'd be upset if that was closed. It's a, it's a major thoroughfare. I've driven on that bridge. It's a major entry point into Rotterdam. It's, 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 it's gorgeous. I love that bridge. The other one's ugly. Who cares? They should tear it down permanently. It's become, it's a national monument. You can't touch it. It's like historic or whatever. They preserved it. They, it's like people live in the past, hate progress, hate success. But more than they hate success, they hate the successful. And they hate the idea of, of consumption of, 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 of a lot. You know, this, they tell a story. This is a New York Times story about this, um, where this uh, Dutch person says, let me find this for you. Um, yeah, I mean, as the story says, Netherlands has billionaires, huge pay gap, huge inequality. Um, but it's this Protestant mentality, secularized into envy. Right? Secularized into envy. It's not even like 
Um, anyway, uh, what was the story? Yeah, she told this story about um, they had a, uh, an exchange student at their home. She's from the Netherlands. She's from the Netherlands. American exchange student at their home. And uh, the mother told the kid, you know, you can prepare your own sandwich. And when the, the American, when they prepared their sandwiches, they like put one sausage in the sandwich, and that was what they ate for lunch. And, and the American kid, when he prepared his sandwich, put five sausages in there. And it was like, you know, you don't. What do you need five sausages for? Nobody eats five sausages. Now they didn't say anything to him because they're polite. But that's what they thought. They rolled their eyes. They thought it was absurd. This conspicuous consumption. They're very against that. Like if you go to the Netherlands, I live pretty good. But but there's this mentality. And it's the kind of mentality that 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 you know, the hatred of success, the hatred of of uh, of conspicuous success, which kills culture, kills cultures. You know. And Amsterdam used to be the greatest city in the world. Seven, certainly in the 17th century, it was probably the, the best city in the world to be in. All right. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brook Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.